because we start off in a world that is not impartial, then the data that we have from this world is also not impartial. Right? We'll have more data from certain parts of the world than others. Right? We'll have more data about certain types of people or people from certain socioeconomic classes more than others. And uh, because of history, right, the type of data, even if we had a perfect sample, there would still be inequalities. Right? We live in a world that is unequal. And what happens with a machine learning algorithm is all it knows is the data that you give it. So if you're going to give it data that has these inequalities, it's going to learn them. And in optimizing whatever it's trying to optimize, whatever prediction you want, uh, it will pick up on these cues and basically will learn from them and just replicate them or sometimes even exacerbate them. This is Elisa Selis, a research scientist at TPFL. Her research focuses on algorithmic biases and their major social consequences. And of course, one of the major first steps in this line of work is to determine a formal computable definition of algorithmic bias. So, what is discrimination? Oh, that's a very hard question. <laughs> so, uh, there's, yeah, there's many different definitions of bias, and it's very hard to say what is the right definition. And really, the issue is that it's very context dependent. Right? So, if you're talking about uh, something like uh, the judicial example, there it's a little bit more well defined in that we have legal precedents, legal protections that say you cannot discriminate with respect to race or gender or sexual orientation. Right? These are all codified uh, by the law. So there the first thing is that it's a little bit simpler in that you know that, okay, you should treat these groups of people equally in some sense. Um, but how to measure how equally you're treating groups, there could be many different ways of doing that. Right, so one way of doing that is to say that my prediction should be equally accurate no matter which group, which ethnicity you're a part of. Right? Another way of defining it is that um, I should make the same percentage of predictions as yes, this will be a repeat offender and no, this will not be a repeat offender regardless of group. Right? So there's many different notions and it's this, I think, is one of the biggest challenges, is understanding what the right notion is in a given context. And this is something where we as computer scientists don't have the full story. We need to work in conjunction with the law, in conjunction with public policy, in conjunction with possibly even ethicists and uh, sociologists to really understand what are the right definitions for our particular algorithm in this context. Now, this is unsatisfactory, but there is worse many of the definitions that sound good are actually mutually incompatible. Yes, uh, definitely. There's tension between all these different definitions of fairness. Some you can accomplish simultaneously, uh, others you cannot. And there's actually some very strong impossibility results in some cases uh, that say you can't, uh, you can't do both or you can't do multiple kinds of, of these fairness, which is why we need to find some way to, uh, to decide what, what is the right notion for a particular context. But arguably, we have not yet converged on a single definition of discrimination because we have not thought this through. Could we eventually agree on a single definition? Well, I don't think we can ever agree on a single definition because I do think it's very context dependent. In some contexts, one definition will be right or better than another and it could be the opposite somewhere else. So I don't think we can agree on one definition. But if we don't have a definition for discrimination, what can be done about discrimination? What I've been trying to do in my work, along with several of my colleagues here, is to come up with general frameworks so that you can input the definition that you need, and then our algorithm will satisfy your definition. So that way we don't have to reinvent the wheel every time that there's a new context where a new definition is necessary. Uh, we still have these fundamental algorithms that are fast, that are efficient, that can optimize, but constrained according to whatever particular constraints you need. So basically, Dr. Selis and her collaborators have been constructing a package that decision makers can use to apply any possible definition of fairness. Yeah, I guess not all possible definitions, but yes, as many, uh, many definitions, and then you can also come up with your own definition, right? And our algorithm will largely work, uh, works with a large class of definitions. 
So I work in the area of uh, data analytics and the idea is that we study data to answer questions that are typical of social sciences. So some of the main technical challenges, uh, for example, on these online applications is that uh, we need things to be very fast, right? Because you're loading a web page, it has to be there like that. 